Hi crafters, I'm Daniela of AB Crafty. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a wet felted masquerade mask or Venetian mask, whatever you wanna call it. The materials are in the description along with the link to the step-by-step -step instructions on my blog, abcrafty.com. Start by pulling off thin sections of the wool and lay them in one direction on some bubble wrap. Then place another layer of fibers on top in the opposite direction. As you add the wool, make sure to keep the layers thin. You can always add more wool if there are thin spots. Repeat this so there are four layers of fiber. You want the layout to be bigger than the finished item. Wool typically shrinks between about 20 and 50% when felted, so you have to factor that in. To make that calculation easy, you can use the wool shrinkage calculator that I linked to below, or I also made a handy cheat sheet that you can download. However, if you're not worried about using up extra wool, make about a 20 inch by 15 inch rectangle. This will make sure it's big enough to cover a basic mask. Now, after you have your layers of wool, add the embellishments. This is personally my favorite part because there are no rules to it. I use different viscose threads and fibers, silks, and wool neps. I like to place them randomly and be surprised when it's all felted. Then after adding the embellishments, cover everything with a mesh fabric. Then mix olive oil soap into some warm water and spray it over everything. Olive oil soap is important because it doesn't produce as many bubbles as other types of soaps. Carefully press the water into the fiber. The goal is to push the water in, but push the air out of the wool. Once it's all wet, get your hands nice and soapy and gently rub on the top of the mesh. This creates a skin to the fibers. Then continue rubbing and lifting the mesh occasionally to make sure the fibers aren't sticking. Now, I was watching TV while making this mask, so I felted it by hand for longer than I normally do. But when the fibers are staying in place and not sticking, it's time to roll. What you're gonna do is wrap everything around a pool noodle and then wrap a towel around all of that. You're gonna roll it 100 times, giving the log a quarter turn every 25 rolls. Then unwrap everything and roll from the other side. You wanna roll it from all four sides and flip the wool over and roll it from all four sides again. Then you can get more aggressive and roll the project around just the pool noodle or use other methods to felt. I go over the full felting and fulling process and other techniques in my beginner's guide to wet felting video and blog post that I link below. Once the wool has shrunk a noticeable amount, you can start to shape it. This is when you'll wanna take out the plastic mask. This is gonna be your mold. If it's made of a porous material, wrap it in plastic wrap first. Then place the felt over the plastic mask. Get your hands nice and soapy again and start rubbing the wool. What you're doing is shrinking the fibers to the shape of the mask. Therefore, make sure you get all the little details of the eyes and nose and edges. Eventually, you have a shrunk piece of fabric that has all the details of the mask. Once you feel good about the shape, take it off the mask and rinse it under warm water until it doesn't feel soapy anymore. Be sure to rinse off the plastic mask as well, or just wipe the soap off of it. Then add a splash of vinegar to some water and let the wool soak in it. The vinegar brings the wool back to its normal, slightly acidic state. This will bring back some of the shine and add durability. Squeeze it out and place it over the plastic mask again. Make sure all the details are lined up, then let it dry. Once dry, trace the eyes and outline. Since my plastic mask has that bit in the middle at the top sticking out, I ended up improvising that line that connects the middle section. Once you have the outline done, cut the outside. Then here's a trick to cut out the eye holes. Fold it at the middle of one of the eyes and cut out a small slit. Use this hole to then put your scissors through it and cut out the rest of the eye hole. Repeat this for the other eye and trim off any extra bits. I like to fold it in half and make sure that the sides are the same. Now, to be honest, I actually tend to underfelt my masks and this is so it keeps more of the details, but this then also means that I need to use fabric stiffener in order for the masks to hold their shape. I found Aileen's fabric stiffener mixed with a little bit of water works really well for this. Use a paintbrush to paint it onto the back of the mask. Then place it back on the plastic mask. This way, it'll harden to the correct shape. After it all dries, you can see how well it holds its shape compared to before. Next, you wanna add the ribbons. Cut two pieces of ribbons measuring 15 inches each. 
Then put some basic school glue in the top corner and add the ribbons. You can either hold them in place for a few minutes or if you're impatient like me, <laughs> use some binder clips or some sewing clips. I've only recently discovered these clips and they're pretty much a game changer. Let the glue dry and remove the clips. Then your wet felted masquerade mask is complete. If you enjoyed this wet felting tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more crafting videos. And to see what I'm crafting day to day, follow me on Instagram and across my socials. And if you have suggestions for other felting or crafting videos you'd like to see, please comment below.